Hello everyone, I am Purang Kupana, a PhD candidate at the University of the Western Cape. Uh, I am located in South Africa, if it's necessary to mention that. Uh, I am under supervision of Prof. Roy Martins and Dr. Xian Julikwa. So our work is on constraining the cosmological information with H1 intensity mapping uh, using um, the radio telescopes in interferometer modes. So this is the work that has been done in previous years. So they were constraining uh, the cosmological information using a Gaussian surveys. So here we're going to repeat the same thing, but now uh, detecting like the H1 intensity mapping. So with H1 intensity mapping, we investigate the possibility of performing cosmological studies using the suitable uh, extensions a radio telescope. They can be in such as uh, single dish modes and in interferometer mode. So as I said, the surveys that we're dealing with is the interferometer mode surveys. So this um, surveys um, high angular resolution, which are good on detecting at, um, at, at smaller scales. Uh, which means at smaller uh, 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 wavelengths. So, okay, which can map like a large uh, fluctuations in less time and we still get, uh, we still get like cosmological information. And here we measure like the growth rate of structure, which is given by this uh, variable F here. And this is also uh, parametrized by this omega m at the power gamma. So now, because you are using uh, the information from um, lambda CDM and uh, standard uh, dark energy models, which means we have to use uh, a constant uh, gamma of uh, 0 0.55. So this growth rate. Uh, it provides a powerful consistency test of uh, general relativity and a, a test of modified gravity. And, um, and this growth rate is extracted by a, a technique that called a ratio space distortion. So um, the ratio space distortion actually it's uh, stores um, the distortion of the real space uh, in uh, ratio space uh, or, or, uh, in ratio space distortion, and um, on larger scales like in RST, uh, the fluctuations are squashed in the line of sight direction, and this causes the effect calls the Kaiser effect, and then on the smaller scales. Obviously, like we, uh, the fluctuations, the stretching along the line of sight, which is it's along the redshift direction. So this is also called the effect that called the finger of God effect. So um, H one intensity mapping experiments are low resolution, wider uh, field of view. Uh, the, than the surveys of the individual um, sources. As I said, like it covers large uh, cosmological volume in a short of time. So the panels on the top left here. So it shows the distribution of galaxies. Uh, so that are in uh, white dots. And this each galaxy is always like they have an um, H1 mass. And those H1 mass, if like we use like a radio telescope and they detect uh, those H1 masses from uh, the galaxies. So we observe the maps that we get here in uh, blue and greenish uh, spots. And um, 
this actually it minimizes time on observing uh, this H1 galaxies because we are taking like uh, an integrated um, uh, measurement of the galaxies. So H1 in uh, galaxies emits a spectral uh, line with the rest frequency of uh, uh, 14, uh, 20 megahertz. And then when we observe that, we uh, get the information for uh, using this model, um, 21 centimeter uh, plus one plus uh, redshift. So information from H1 power spectra, we used uh, H1 fluctuations to uh, probe the power spectra of meta uh, fluctuations. So the Fourier transform, so which means uh, meta uh, fluctuations are traced by this um, uh, H1 bias and this uh, background temperature of H1 intensity mapping. And this is the model of H1 power spectrum, uh, where like we have this uh, clustering uh, of the galaxies and the short noise. So in our work, we just um, neglected, neglected uh, this uh, uh, short noise. So which means we didn't consider the short noise. And here on the uh, left here is the plot that shows like the power spectrum uh, with respect to uh, wave number K. So ratio space distortions. So we measure like the H1 power spectrum to get the cosmological information uh, uh, through this technique RSD. So like the figure on the uh, left here, it shows like how this RSD affect uh, RSD effect affect the structures uh, at large scales. We can see like uh, rare space if we observe that in redshift, then we can see like um, the fluctuations, they are squashed along the line of sight. And again, on nonlinear scales, the fluctuations are also uh, generate the elongated structures along the line of sight. So this is the effect that calls, that calls the Kaiser RSD effect. So it adds this information of um, growth rate uh, structure and it's model as it's given by this uh, model here. And in nonlinear scales, we have this additional uh, term, which is the finger of what effect. So this mu as well, like it's the cosine angle that is given by this redshift uh, direction and a Fourier mode direction. So the survey specifications that we are uh, uh, focusing on, uh, as I said, uh, the interferometer modes, so it's the Hyrex and Puma. So Hyrex, for Hyrex, the ones that have like uh, 256 number of dishes and then also for 1024 uh, dishes and also for POMA for 5k dishes and the um, true number of dishes. So all they have like the same uh, specifications. So the beam of the telescope as well, it depends on the diameter of the dish, which is also like shown in the table above here. So uh, practical challenges that we uh, get when detecting the H1 power spectrum. The issues for achieving this uh, 21 centimeter uh, cosmology goals are the foreground contaminations that are in a similar frequency range to the H1 signals uh, we are aiming to detect. So mostly those contaminations affect the lower scales of along the line of sight. And we restricted the foreground uh, radiation to be 
estimated to 0 0.01 megahertz, I mean, H per megaparsec. And also we can see even on the diagram that I take from uh, Kangchong et al, uh, that we can see that those contaminations affect this uh, region. And again, we also have um, uh, foreground wedge, wedge con contaminations. So is the result from the fact that a given interferometric uh, baseline has a fixed um, uh, physical length. So which means that if probes, uh, it probes uh, different uh, angular scales at different frequency. So naturally smooth a spectrum uh, foreground can appear to have significantly uh, more complicated uh, spectrum. So, which means we have to use the signals of uh, along the line of sight, which is given by this model, uh, the watch and much by, by the transverse um, uh, wave. So this um, a watch it's given by this function, which is depends on uh, a beam of the telescope. So on this diagram here, we can see uh, that at the bottom of this line, we have like some complications. So which means we have to neglect this region in order to uh, get the information from H1 power spectrum. So um, the Fisher matrix forecast is the methodology that helps to get the constraints, um, um, uh, constraining the cosmological information uh, parameters. So it focuses the is the focus focus the precision of measurement on cosmological parameters. So assumes like uh, Gaussian errors on each observa observa observable um, characterized by a variance, which is uh, approximately to um, a cosmological model, which is given by this, and like uh, uh, a P noise, the instrumental noise from the surveys. So we can get like this Fisher matrix uh, from each reshift bin if we choose like our reshift bin to be 0 0.1. And then um, this uh, partial uh, H1 power spectrum is the derivative with respect to the parameters that we are considering. So, and again, the K mean and the K max. So the K mean depends on the surveys where like the K max, we are restricted to uh, be uh, that. So, because now we want the total feature of this uh, reshift bins, which means uh, we are going to uh, get like accumulative uh, constraints from uh, this feature. So, marginalizing over parameters, we uh, we invert the total fissure to obtain the covariance. And then marginalized errors are the diagonal uh, elements of the matrix. So the three uh, parameters that we are considering. So is this a B naught, F naught, sigma, this sigma, it comes from um, a finger of good effect. It's a dumping term of the finger of good effect and this cosmological uh, uh, parameters. So we use symbol one parameter models for this two and also for this uh, um, uh, sigma H1 naught. So if you can see, we have like this naught, it means that this are the parameters that are considered at the ratio Z is equals to zero. So this is the results that we got. And uh, we, we have realized that the survey uh, Puma uh, 32K 
is the one which give us like a better constraints compared to our hyrex and also this on the uh, left uh, results here uh, the cosmological uh, uh, parameters and then on the right here are the uh, astrophysical parameters so both um, results obviously it shows that Puma is the one which gives us like a better constraints. So this uh, parameters on the right here, they depend on redshift. So like when we compute this thing, um, when you choose like a, a redshift bin, like we have to be more careful, like we have to choose like a less, uh, a smaller redshift bin as possible in order to get like a better constraint of this one. So as for the results of this Puma, we can see like gamma, it has like 0.4%, sorry about that, 4%. And for other service, for other parameters as well, uh, we have like a better uh, precision uh, than this, uh, than Hyrex. So as we, we've seen that like Hyrex 1024 is the one which it follows as compared to other uh, uh, surveys. So here we didn't, uh, we did not include the information from the distance which involves like an AP effect. So, which means we didn't include AP effect. We just only get the information from uh, 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 the H1 power spectrum, like the cosmological parameters. So for the future work, we have to extend the constraint to include other cosmological parameters. And also what we have to do is to focus for cosmos car measurement from across uh, correlation uh, to one centimeter uh, intensity maps with uh, galaxy number pounds. And um, this is going to be uh, for Hyrex and the Euclid and then Puma with DESI and Euclid, but in a different reshift range. So this can improve uh, better